Hello friends, this is Navdeep Singh from Mitbulzai.com. Today in our art and culture series, we'll be discussing about paintings. For today, our topic of discussion would be firstly classification of paintings, then prehistoric paintings, then the Gupta age paintings. We'll be also discussing something about the Mughal paintings and then we'll also see into how the Mughal paintings evolved into the modern type of paintings as of today. So firstly, talking about the classification of paintings, paintings are classified into mainly two types, depending upon their size, miniature painting and secondly, the mural painting. So talking a bit about the mural paintings, these are very, very large works executed in the form of paintings on walls of large structures. And these mainly have a Persian influence upon them. Certain example of mural paintings are at the Ajanta and Ellora caves. So in the caves, first they would plaster the walls of the caves and then apply their own paintings upon them. Second is the miniature paintings. Miniature paintings are very, very delicate and small paintings done mostly on things such as paper, palm leaf, cloth or glass. The two more important conditions are that they should not be or the size of a miniature painting should not be more than 25 square inch and the size of the subject in the painting should not be more than one sixth of the size of the subject in the actual size. Example of miniature paintings are those found in the Pala school of paintings and also in the Ragmala school of paintings. So talking about the various types of paintings, namely the prehistoric, the Gupta, the Mughal and the others, we'll be starting with prehistoric paintings now. So basically prehistoric paintings were of the types of mural paintings, that being very large scale. And these were basically petroglyphs, which are mainly rock, engravings upon a particular rock surface. All these prehistoric paintings belong to three periods, mainly the Upper Paleolithic, the Mesolithic and lastly the Chalcolithic period. In all these periods, the common features were bold lines made by colors such as ochre red, yellow earth or soot black. These were all naturally occurring colors which the people or man or human being at that point in time could make use of. Figures such as that of animals, humans and hunting scenes were made on those rock engravings or the petrogryphs. So the biggest example or the most famous example of these prehistoric paintings were the Dimbhedka cave paintings which were discovered by V. Va Kankar. Discussing a bit about the three periods that we have discussed in the prehistoric paintings. The upper Paleolithic paintings firstly made use of white, dark red and green lines and with those colors they depicted themes such as animals like bigger animals, bisons, elephant, rhinos and etc. So, in the upper Paleolithic period, all was on a larger scale. Coming to the paintings of Mesolithic times, in these mainly red color was used as against the white or other colors that were being used in the Paleolithic period. And here the size of the painting decreased because as we've already discussed that the size of paintings in the upper Paleolithic period was very, very huge. In the Mesolithic times, the size decreased to an extent. Now, the themes of these paintings were like grazing or riding and others. The last period of prehistoric paintings was the Chalcolithic paintings. In the Chalcolithic times, they made use of colors such as green and yellow. And with these colors, 
they depicted scenes such as those of battle scenes. This was about the prehistoric paintings. The next important period of painting that is worth discussing about is the Gupta age paintings. In the Gupta age paintings, all the famous paintings that we discuss of as of today are there. For example, Ajanta, Elora, Bag, the Kamasutra paintings, all these belonged to the Gupta age. Now talking a bit about Ajanta cave paintings because these are one of the most important paintings or evidences of Gupta age that we have present or we have as of today that these are mural paintings again the same meaning the paintings done on a large scale on the walls and these are specific features such as expressing emotions through hand postures themes such as animals and birds and most importantly use of tempera style of paintings the next important type of painting is the Elora painting and in the Elora painting there was a very common theme or a popular theme of Ramayana and Mahabharata. Apart from these animals and birds have also been depicted and certain battle scenes have also been depicted as through the Ramayana and Mahabharata themselves. In the same period as we have discussed that all the Gupta paintings till now which we have discussed are the mural paintings there were also some miniature art done in the regional schools and not in the court. So miniature art in the Gupta age was that related to the popular art. Most important of them being the Pala school and the Upper Bhramsha school. In the Pala school paintings were executed on palm leaves and these depicted Buddhist themes. On the other hand in the Upper Bhramsha school the paintings depicted human beings in a certain manner that they were fish shaped bulging eyes that there was a pointed nose and a double chin and it made use of brighter colors this was about the Gupta age paintings after that the most important paintings that were there was related to the Mughal period now we all know that in the Mughal period there were many popular kings starting with Babur and ending till Aurangzeb. So we will be discussing each and every major painting or contribution towards painting by each and every emperor. Firstly all these paintings had Indian, Persian and European influence because of the places from where the emperor belonged and apart from that all these paintings used brilliant or very bright colors. There was an accuracy in line drawing, variety of themes were there, high amount of ornamentation was there, there was use of force sighting techniques and mostly all the paintings were miniature paintings. Force sighting technique was again one technique that was used mainly by the Mughals in which the objects are made in such a manner that a far lying object is seen as to be lying very closer to the person viewing the painting. So after discussing these features we now come to the contribution of each and every emperor towards the painting or development of painting in the country. Firstly we discussed about Babur and we also know that since Babur was indulging or very busy with empire setting in the country he had rarely any time for looking into art and painting in the country but still he patronized a Persian artist named Bihzad. After Babur there was Himayu. Himayu brought two painters from Persia into the Mughal Empire. The name of those painters was Abdul Samad and Sayyid Ali. These were very very popular painters and with the coming of these two painters from Persia into the Mughal court there was some kind of Persian influence that start to flow into the Indian paintings as well. After Himayu there was Akbar. Now Akbar established a different department of painting which was devoted solely for the single purpose. He looked upon painting as a mean of study and amusement and he also gave awards in the courts to the painters and 
he had three very very famous painters by the name of Daswant, Baswant, and Kesu. After that, we discuss the time of Jahangir, in whose time the art of painting reached a very high point. There was emphasis on portrait paintings from now on, and Jahangir was very very fond of nature. So this was for sure to be looked into his paintings and most important theme of Jahangir or Jahangir's paintings was nature itself and his most important or famous painter was Ustad Mansur. After Jahangir we have Shah Jahan. During the times of Shah Jahan still the paintings depicted the same themes like nature itself as had been done by Jahangir and there was an increased use of gold, silver and other brighter colors in the paintings from now on. After Shah Jahan, the last Mughal was Aurangzeb. Now as we've already discussed, Aurangzeb would discourage each and every type of painting or art and culture in the empire. And with this discouragement, the painters at the court felt discouraged and flew the empire. When they flew from the empire, they all established their own regional schools and those regional schools are most importantly the Rajasthani school and secondly the Pahadi school of paintings. After the disbursement of famous painters from the court and the establishment of regional schools that of Rajasthani and Pahadi schools, now we come to the modern type of paintings as we have in the country and one of the most important persons who, are, who can be called as the originator of modern art or modern paintings in the country is Raja Ravi Verma. He is famously called as the Raphael of the East and his famous paintings are Lady in the Moonlight and that of the painting of Ravana kidnapping Sita. The Bengal school of art by Abhinindranath Tagore was also very famous and in these small size paintings were being made which were directly linked to the writings of Tagore himself. A very important or famous painter that we all know as of today was M.F. Hussain and with the coming of M.F. Hussain the cubist style of painting became very very popular. In the cubist style of painting what they actually do is they break up the figure or the object into many many cubes and rearrange all those cubes into a particular final object depicting the thought of the painter himself. The most important theme or motive of M.F. Hussain was the horse. So this is all about modern paintings and in our today's video we have discussed various types of paintings starting from the ancient paintings and the Gupta age paintings. We also looked into the Mughal paintings or Mughal art and with the coming of Raja Ravi Verma and M.F. Hussain we have discussed the modern painting as well. This is all about painting that I wanted to discuss. Thank you very much.